Glad you're back. Me too. All right, gentlemen, you're live. All right. Um, I never know the proper procedure for the first meeting of the year, but uh, I guess I'll take um, I'll take control of the meeting until we have nominations. Um, call the Planning Commission, Franklin Township Planning Commission uh, meeting January 5th, order at 7.02. Um, in attendance, um, Jeff, will you just take it from the the uh, list on? Yes, this sir. List, great. Uh, any public comment? We have uh, the minutes from December 1st. Are we working off of uh, what copy, uh, John and, and Jeff? Jeff put out uh, the formal minutes, I think. Uh, that, is pro that, that carries or captures all the edits that were suggested. Yes, sir. Late this afternoon, um, I uh, helped Sarah out by doing that. So probably somewhere around th three o'clock today, you should have gotten an email from me with them. And that, that captured, Dave, your, your comments, uh, Chuck's comments, um, and they were incorporated into the, into the minutes. I apologize okay. for being so late, but I, I had them done last week and I just put them aside and forgot about them. I apologize for that. Uh, I, I like the minutes and uh, fortunately they're pretty straightforward this time. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah. I have a, there, there are some um, punctuation and style issues with them. Style I don't care about. Punctuation doesn't bother me. Well, <laughs> you can have them. Don't affect the sense so you don't have to make corrections if you don't want to. Uh, but I can tell you what they are if you um, want to. If it's some, if it's something like that, Mr. Lagasse, you and I can work offline. You know, if it's punctuation stuff. Yeah, it's basically uh, punctuation yeah. arrangement. It is not content. Okay. Uh, the only thing I will note that there are two things that are content. Uh, one, at the end, the meeting adjourned does not give the time when the meeting was adjourned. So. That should be added. And the one other that. thing, which I'm aware of only because this is a little bit of a pet interest of mine, is we did discuss a little bit. Um, you could even say I made a point of making it a recurring subject of discussion is that I believe it's important that we take some time to change the um, language of our ordinances so that have to talk about giving waivers. We're giving waivers to pedestrian access, not the sidewalks, um, so that it makes us pause and think twice about what we're doing going forward. Um, I don't think it's necessary to, to stick this back in there, but this is, I think this is something that is important. It's how we think about things as a township um, going forward. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Well, I think we'll cover that when we go through pedestrian access. Um, we talk about doing a feasibility studies and then what's the impact of the feasibility study on the ordinances and the <coughs> change to the ordinances. So I think to some degree that's captured. Uh, but your, your, your point is made, but I think it's it's captured to some degree. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really concerned about the specific language we use. I think the specific language affects how you think about something. So that's why, um, you know, at some point when we start revising ordinances, we need to make sure that you can't seek a waiver for sidewalks. You have to be seeking a waiver for pedestrian access. Uh, I, I don't feel that this is a necessary correction to the minutes. I'm not worried about that. Could I ask for a motion to accept the minutes? with the addition of Paul's comment on the time of adjournment and that um, 
Paul and Jeff would get together on uh, grammar and punctuation. I make a motion to accept the minutes with those caveats. I second it. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Great, thank you. <clears throat> uh, next is the organization of the planning commission. Um, we can have any discussion uh, ahead of time. The first nomination would be a nomination of chairperson. I, I can make it. Jeff, do you, Jeff, do you start? Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, Dr. Hoffman, if you wanted me to handle those two, that, that first item, I can, and then whoever the chairman is. Yeah, can you, take that's, it. that's what I thought. So okay. go ahead. Okay, would anyone like to make a motion to nominate a chairman for the Planning Commission for 2023? Mr. I would Phillips. like to make a motion to nominate Dr. Hoffman as chairperson of the Planning Commission. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, Dr. Hoffman, you're on. All right, thank you everybody for, uh, I would like to say given uh, having confidence in me, but it might also be because nobody else wants to do it. But uh, next would be a, uh, do I have a nomination for vice chairperson? Uh, Chuck? I, I make a motion to nominate Dr. Harris uh, as vice chair person of the planning commission. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right, thank you, Matt. Any discussion? All in favor of uh, Mark Harris as uh, vice chairperson, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, the ayes have it. And um, Next nomination is secretary. Do I have a nomination for secretary of the planning commission? Chuck. I make a motion to nominate John Gontars mm -hmm. as secretary of the planning commission. Even with all the punctuation errors. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know who, if Mark or Matt got in there first, but we'll give it to Matt. Matt. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor of uh, John Gontar as a secretary, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Great. I, uh, <clears throat> I like, Chuck, how you move in there real quick to make uh, <laughs> nominations. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> All right, um, next order of business would be, um, let's uh, start referring to it as pedestrian access. Um, as, as noted prior to the beginning of the meeting, uh, John mentioned it and I think we all do appreciate what Jeff put together between the various uh, entities, land trust and um, LTAP, PSATS, um, and hopefully we all had a chance to go over that a little bit and also um, going through last meeting's minutes, refresh our idea of what we're trying to, um, to come up with. Uh, honestly, um, I was hoping somebody else had chairman, so I had no plans on how to approach this necessarily. Um, Honestly, I, I, I thought about it. I, I'm not, uh, I think more tonight's a discussion. Um, we did have a meeting, uh, um, Dave, um, Jeff, and uh, I guess Chuck, right? The four of us after last planning commission meeting. And uh, I think Dave mentioned that maybe Donna may also be interested so that we have uh, two chairmen on a kind of an ad hoc committee um it's it's not limited to the those five people uh any of any of the rest of us could join in as well but kind of take away what we 
kind of a path forward. Um, no pun intended. Um, and take what we come away with tonight and, and work on it committee wise instead of, and then bring to a public meeting as a planning commission, instead of trying to <clears throat> where come up with uh, ordinances or suggested changes in a public forum like this to start at least. I think the initial interest was to try to do as much as we could within the township, with, within the residents and our current consultants before necessarily going out and looking for a, um, a specific consultant to help us address this issue. I'll, I'll leave it at that for right now, if anybody wanted to add to, to what I mentioned there. I think that makes sense. That makes sense. I think what I came up with, with all the information that Jeff forwarded, and I'll be honest with you, I did not read every page and every word for word, but at least going through the other ordinances, um, I think we are looking to be trailblazers <laughs> on, a, um, on an ordinance that incorporates all the different aspects of pedestrian access. Um, seems like everybody, at least the ordinances that were there, were mostly focused on sidewalks with one paragraph or sentence associated with paths or trails. I would agree with that. Yeah, that it was largely sidewalk focused, I agree. I did notice that there was one page, 167, I believe. Um, I'm looking at my, that would have been 160, uh, that's one, it's, it's not in the 167 in the book. It's 167 of the model ordinance um, that's referred to in the book. And it's, it was interesting in that, I'm trying to see if I can pull this up because I know I have it on my desktop here. Um, Do you want the ability to share your screen, Paul? Um, sure. Do I have it? Hold on just a second. Sure. So what I did was, um, you're I right. actually just read something that was there, and I thought that the information was truncated. It was actually spread over um, two pages. Um, uh, select that window. All right, that's interesting. It seemed to be able to share but it's not allowing me to show uh, a given window this way so i'm not sure what's going on here <sighs> mr lagasse i'm always willing to try if you want to guide me i just have to work on the other side of the room, it's up yeah, to you. Okay, so give me, bear with me one second. Um, I can do, I can actually just quickly send you this page by email, Jeff, if you want. I can't get pedestrian, I can't get the, when I bring in the sharing function, I don't, I seem to be, oh wait, okay. Now I can see a whiteboard, that's all I can see. Uh, drag it into there i can try that but it's a pdf file oh. Oh, so work. hang on let me see what i can do yeah it doesn't like that was it a specific page in the book yeah the, it is but the problem is is that I isolated the page from the um, code it was referring. So in order to do that, I may be able to tell you which page it is, but I really think it's gonna be easier if I try and email this to Jeff and if I get out of this share mode. Uh, 
Okay. Let me just try this one more time. Mr. Lagasse, is it the one, Wait. one of the ones from PSATs? No, hold on. It's giving me a portion of screen. Maybe I can do it that way. All right. Can you see that? I can't. Pedestrian access and circulation? Just a it's black still screen. loading for me. Yeah, it's loading for me. It's all select. Uh, yeah, it just says started screen sharing <coughs> or black screen. Yeah, okay. So I can see a, what is a window with literally nothing behind it. Um, and I have no idea. And it goes from green to yellow. Okay, this is not working. Um, Let me see. Can you see anything now? It's interesting. No. Okay. It didn't work either. All right. I have to figure out. Uh, the problem is, Jeff, can you stop my sharing at your end? I have gotten this weird artifact that I literally cannot get rid of. And the, I, I understand what you're seeing, but... I've lost all my controls. Thank you. You better stop my screen sharing before I do any real damage. I, I stopped it, sir. Yeah, I noticed that because it came back. Um, now this is not scrolling. All right. Um, Um, so, in the book, it comes before you get to the large Pennsylvania, here we go. Now, this would be it starts on what appears to be page 18 of the book and runs on to page 19. Can you see that, Mr. Lagasse? Yep. Is that okay? So you see, it, it's referring to um, the sample saldo uh, from um, Lancaster County Planning Department and its pedestrian access and circulation. And it has an intent. And then if you go to the next, it's continued on to the next page where it continues to describe the intent. And then it goes beyond that to, to design guidelines. And it starts by actually placing trails first and sidewalk second, which I thought was a somewhat interesting approach. Um, it doesn't necessarily mandate one over the other except um, in urban growth areas um, for sidewalks, which would be typical. Um, but I found it intriguing because they seem to give equal weight to both and they grouped both together under um, a single topic, which was um, pedestrian access and circulation. So <clears throat> an element of this has been attempted um, elsewhere for what it's worth. Um, and this was the only time that I really felt I saw something that kind of gave equal weight to both of them and treated both of them as um, um, equal elements of a greater design feature, which is pedestrian action. It's very brief, it's not detailed. Um, it's, it's actually, what is split over two pages here is one page in the original. Um, as I say, I thought it was cropped off because it was spread over two pages, and, which is why I went looking for the original. Um, Do we, um, 
think of more than trails and sidewalks for pedestrian yeah. access when we're going forward. I think yeah, we I'm think not. about um, shoulders. I mean, we literally don't even have shoulders at this point. We used to have shoulders, but we don't have shoulders. I think shoulders is our, you know, taking baby steps, going from zero to, to somewhere. I, I think shoulders is, is a powerful way to at least get started. Um, you know, I, and, I agree, with, agree with Chuck. You know, what we're doing is right now we're talking about solutions, but we haven't identified problems yet. And I was wondering if a way of attacking this is let's identify the problem areas that we see first and then try to organize the problem areas um, towards solutions. And then, then the solutions, um, you know, deal with those and see if the solutions work or not. At least that way we'll make some progress um, rather than just working on solutions without identifying the problems. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say the problem is township wide. Well, no argument, but can we find specific locations to work with? Because I'm sure each location is going to be, could be a little different, whether it's a state road or a, or a, or a township road, for example. The solution is going to be different in the case of a state road. We've got to work with the state. In the case of a township <coughs> road, we don't have to necessarily do that. Yeah, I, I think we we start with. I, I my thought would be that um, the a development road. The reason people move into developments actually a big reason is that they can walk and they can you know you know they're not on a main or and or their kids. Um, so a development road generally has pedestrian access. Um, it's the feeder roads and um, that, so it, I would say that we should start with township feeder roads um, and then worry about state roads in the township because the state is going to be obviously a little more complicated and we don't want to come up with a solution that the state's happy with that forces us to do things on our own feeder roads. Um, that that would be. I, I would think we would attack feeder roads first. Okay, and I, I don't think I don't think I just I don't disagree with you with that at all. Now, which feeder roads would have a priority? You know, do we have roads identified as being? If we were to prioritize things on a one through 10 basis, which ones would be the ones and which ones would be the tens? And then we start working on the ones and working our way down towards the tens, at least with an intention of dealing with it all. But we're not going to get it all done because we have budgetary constraints and other constraints as we move forward with this. Right. So, so if, what, I think that, if, if, what I hear from you guys so far is, I hear problems. Problems are not safely able to go to the mailbox. Mm -hmm. Not safely able to go from point A to point B on a very um, a township that has destinations, interests that are spread out. Those are the problems. And then I hear hotspots, which we, we kind of use that term, which was then that's what we would use to prioritize one through 10 or right. whatever. And then we come up with solutions, which are sidewalks, trails, shoulders. Um, <clears throat> that's what I kind of see we're, we're mixing all three and it's fine for discussion, but if to give the, um, the committee ideas on problems, it's, uh, you know, the mailboxes, how to get from point A to point B uh, in a rural township. <clears throat> um, and then where should we focus? And then how do we solve would, the problems within that spot? I would add recreation. So I would, I would include runners and walkers. No destination, you know what I mean? Just being able to go around the block. I mean, that's, just, that's a challenge in our township, just to run around the block. Um, 
<clears throat> can I bring up uh, an item from last meeting? And I know Chuck, we joked about a little bit about cyclists and just to, to have a discussion about that with all the work that we plan to put into pedestrian access, are we ignoring the cyclists at an expense that we're gonna to have to come back and rewrite the book if we only look at pedestrian access? And I, I toss that out as the group. Should we be yeah. looking at that at least in part when we're looking at pedestrian access? Hey, Dave, can you give an example of like what, what we might overlook, like something a cyclist might need that a walker might not? Um, cyclists have the same, we should have the same concerns about safety using the roads, but then also if we're developing trails, paths, whatever we want to call them that are not, mm -hmm. you know, we, I, I think we've, we've all come accustomed that cyclists don't belong on sidewalks as right. traditional sidewalks are okay but for trails and paths that are already existence and existing in the township it would be part of the scope of this um endeavor um so a road bike is a much different animal than a mountain bike um so I guess you you would you would look at a road bike as being the litmus test, and and mountain bikes will figure it out. Um, mountain bikes will access a lot more stuff than than road bikes. So, but I don't know that anybody's done anything beyond striping, to be honest. Um, and uh, I mean for road bikes. Yeah, for for yeah for yeah. Um, so, um, and you don't want, so it's interesting. The, when, when I ride my bike on the road, I do not hug the side for two reasons. It, one is you tend to get flats a lot more if you're on the shoulder or the side. The other reason is that cars come by you twice the speed if they don't acknowledge that they're passing you. So I actually ride about a foot away from the white stripe and that's taken years to come to terms with that. But bikes, um, it's actually more dangerous for a bike to be riding on a sidewalk or a, off the road because cars don't realize they're there until the last second. Um, and or just don't acknowledge that they should be on the road. Um, so, I mean, I think signage and, and striping is how you keep bikers safe, safer on the roads. And as little as a sign, you know, signs that say you're entering Franklin Township, uh, share the road with, with bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, yeah, it sounds like it could be part of this, or at least we acknowledge that we can do it as much for cyclists as we do for um, horse-drawn uh, vehicles. Yeah. We've done a better job in the township. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it's using the trail. And my other aspect was the trails being utilized by both mountain bikers and pedestrians. So I think the trails would tend to be used by unless they're pristine trails, I don't think a road bike is gonna go on there. A gravel bike, yes, and a mountain bike, yes. Um, so then that's who would, we would be thinking about for those, you know, if, if it's a separated trail. But that currently is the case, I believe, isn't it, for most of the trails in the township? I mean, it's the case for the trail that runs around the former Ford farm. Bike access is permitted, specifically permitted. Is permitted or forbidden? Permitted. Permitted, yeah. Yeah. So um, the, the only thing to pay attention with respect to trails was making sure that trails were spacious enough to allow for safe pedestrian and bike riding in combination. That's the parks. I thought we weren't 
I, I are we talking about the parks? Uh, well, if you're talking, so there, it seems to me that there, there are two things when, when Dave is outlining dividing things up and sort of like getting from point A to B and, um, you know, the, the road access um, stuff, like getting to your mailbox, it, it's really going to come to, I think it's going to come down to two things. There are areas in which it's simply going to be impractical <clears throat> to um, increase access by modifying the road or the roadside. And so the way you, the township is going to have to look to increase access is through a trail system that moves away from the road and perhaps behind properties. Um, in other areas, uh, something I was thinking about after that's a last that's time, a heavy lift to go behind people's properties. Nobody wants it. It, it is a heavy lift, property. and it would take a lot of planning and agreement. But in some areas. We're going to have to face the fact that it, if it's going to happen, it's going to have to happen in a manner like that. Yeah. Well, um, and I think we're get from to the center of Kemblesville from Walker Road safely on Appleton, unless you find some way of in providing access. Now it could, and there'd be no way. There's really no way of doing it without gaining cooperation of, of property right. owners. Because well, and I think that one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking right now, though, is we might be going a little, it's like maybe two or three steps down the road from where I think we want to be right now, which is let's just look at where Franklin Township is now and identify what we can do with pre-existing structures, right? So are there partial trails that could be worked on and extended easily? Are there stretches of road that we might, I mean, I think Chuck brought up a really good point. We used to have shoulders. Those shoulders have been eliminated, whether it was encroaching lay, you know, encroaching erosion or whatever it is. Like looking at the road system as it is without creating a master plan where we're saying door-to-door -door access to any point in Franklin Township. Right. So, so I'm not saying you're you're the conversation is a bad one, you know, it's good to have it, but I think we're way at putting the cart in front of the horse right now. Okay, but there's something else I'd like to just throw out there. Okay. And so in talking about roadside access, yeah. um, I think we can all agree that pedestrians would probably generally be happy to use ample shoulders um as a means of getting around but an ample shoulder is not a sidewalk and advocating shoulders for pedestrian use may get tricky when you come because of safety considerations uh, yeah i think i think that there's again i think we're putting we're we're we're, we're you're you're right that's true but i think we're we're going a step a little bit too far the first my first pass, at least where my head's at, maybe I'm maybe I'm in the minority, is, you know, right now people are using the roadways as pedestrians, right? They're on their bikes, they're walking to parks, they're doing these things. I think the first step is seeing, okay, where are these people walking now? And are there ways that we can make those improve improvements rather than and making those making those improvements safer? Not necessarily saying hey, Franklin Township just, you know, put in a new shoulder, everyone bring their dogs down and walk along the side of Peacedale Road. It's more like, hey, we notice a lot of people walking from, you know, 896 to Cross and Park. Where along Peacedale Road can we make it a little bit easier and safer for people to do that, right? And then further down the line, you're we kind of start talking about, all right, well, now that people are doing that, maybe how do we extend the trail system to make it easier to go from, um, I'm drawing a blank, like Crossing Park to a paradox, right? Like how do we create trail systems within the actual infrastructure that, are, that, that we would advertise and we would promote, right? That I see them as two separate entities, if, that, if I'm doing my, if I'm explaining myself correctly. Yeah, no, and, and and Dave, just quickly, 
in in my comment, I'm, I'm dropping the the say vineyard access as an issue, but what I'm trying to get at in talking about shoulders is <clears throat> if you are going out there and saying that. I'm concerned that if we're going out there and saying we're we're creating shoulders or widening shoulders here because we know people are walking on the roads and we're trying to make the roads safe for pedestrians, right? We're going to have uh, a potential issue. Mm -hmm. I I totally agree with that. I just it's safer for pedestrians, safer for motorists, safer for everyone if we design roads to have a shoulder that either motorists or 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 people that are there for some reason can get off the road and so therefore we're not so our first baby step is to make our roads safer for the occasional pedestrian that's already on the road for a pedestrian that finds themselves there or for a motorist that finds themselves stranded they have and i think we only do one side so that it's wide enough that you can get off the road instead of trying to do a wide card path plus double shoulders we do one shoulder and i also think that we do it on our new roads and when we resurface the road we should be doing that and we so therefore as we resurface all our roads it's going to happen um and right, that's so, the baby step. That's that's totally a baby step. That is not, we don't get done with that, put our hands up and say, we made a pedestrian safe township. We just made no, it safer. That, but I don't actually, I guess, see, the where I'm going with this is, I think the key to making the roads safer for, to, for pedestrians is to make the roads safer, period. And I agree with you in that respect, Chuck. And that, what we're talking about in terms of improving, um, if we by chance happen to improve the safety of a road for someone walking on the shoulder, it's because we've improved the safety of a road for emergency situations generally. In other words, I think safety is the back door, is the way that pedestrian access gets in the back door. And that approaching this as pedestrian access in some ways, in terms of the roads, is looking at it wrong. We need safer roads and we need safer roads by adding shoulders. And then if people start walking on them, that's their business from my point of view, because if we're looking at, at trying to create shoulders to create pedestrian access, I think that's good. If, if we approach it that way, it's gonna raise red flags. I, I agree. I, I just, for the reasons I stated, I think, the right. shoulders is, but is I don't a think it's a baby step. step. I think that's a major step in in making it easier for people to get places. I used to walk from my house, the one side of the village, into the center of the village to what was then the land hope to get the paper. I really have no desire to do that anymore because of the way the traffic moves up and down Appleton. Forget 896. If there was a shoulder, I'd have a space for, to walk and it would be desirable because in many places there are no places for cars to pull off if they have a problem. Yeah, and so we, if we're making our roads safer by adding shoulders, we can go to PennDOT and say, we want you to make your roads safer by making sure that there's adequate shoulders on your roads too. This, mm -hmm. is, a town, yes. this is a township wide program. Yes. I so, think. If I can explain why I was talking global pedestrian access, including trails, paths, uh, whatever we want, is because of our recent um, comprehensive plan where we had maps and we, we, know, we, we indicated that we wanted to try to improve the circulation um, throughout the township. And although I agree that there are the priority, initial priority may be roads and shoulders. That's um, years process and that we wouldn't wanna miss the opportunity to be addressing a trail or an opportunity that comes up along that timeline. If we only wanna look at uh, what's been referred to as a baby step, 
<clears throat> and focus on shoulders, I think we're missing the point of our comprehensive plan and 10 years will go by and we, we didn't address as much as we potentially could have. Yeah, fair point. But then you get back to what I was talking about that you are going to have to get cooperation of property owners to do some of that. It's not going to be, some of that's not going to happen it, along roadsides right. because that's true. And you, you also have to come up with the funds to be able to put shoulders in. And, right. and we're not going to come up with that overnight, too. Any of these um, remedies that we have have some hiccups to them. So, so my idea for shoulders is we keep making the road wider because basically what happens is it's easy to go from one, um, one side of the... Um, the existing road to the other side, they mill it down full width and it's easier just to put both bottom coat and top coat back on it and they're done. But if we have it, but so we've ended up with wider drive lanes, which create higher speeds, which create less safety. We need to shrink it back down to the desired width determine which side we want the shoulder on, have them put the base coat all the way across, and then only top coat the actual driving surface. So now you have a shoulder there um, with a discernible difference in height of an inch and a half because the top coat's an inch and a half. The, the striping has to be specified and it goes in. And that at the same cost for putting in a standard road when we replace a road, we can get that done and we'll end up with smaller drive aisles with a shoulder. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna take away from the larger vehicles. It's not gonna take away from the farm vehicles or the buses or the emergency vehicles because they have, you know, they have that width of the shoulder. We haven't lost anything in, in the road. We've just slowed everybody down and said, stay within stay in your lane basically. Um, and your lane is not big enough that you can be going 65, 75 around the corner. That's my thought on, on how we, how we start the process without any major, um, without any change in funding because we have to replace roads just as a maintenance standpoint. Is that acceptable? For we the only do so many a year. What was that, Dave? We only do so much length of road per year because... It's very true. That. Yeah. So is that acceptable from a safety point of view, Chuck? From a safety... It's well, a safer how, road. How much can you narrow the lanes safely yeah. so that we don't start... So I shot our existing ordinance out there. So I guess what we have to do is see, I guess that would be part of what we need to figure out with the task force to see how many of our roads meet our design standards. I, I think that's the place to start. I did everybody get the, I, what I did was I went through and I did searches to try and pick up all our existing ordinances. Um, and that's the email that I shot out with a bunch of clips out of it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's our, or, you know, we have in there, uh, let me tell you which one it is. It's road widths, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that road widths comes out of, I believe it comes out of um, development, right? So if somebody's going to put in a new development and it affects any of those roads, those are the standards <laughs> which we require them to, to match. Um, It'd be interesting to see whether our exist. I, you know, I don't know whether our existing roads exceed or re, are are smaller than, um, and see where we are on that. I um, I had a question. I mean, and I I know you, there was a little bit of a focus early on in this conversation about bicycles. I'm just worrying that maybe the effect of doing this would have the perverse impact of making it less safe for bicycles. I'm looking at the pen, the the Stat the Pennsylvania statute, Title 75, uh, Section 33 governs bicycles. 
And as it stands right now, if you if we widen the road, we actually remove the ability of cyclists to use the entire road, which is what they're entitled to now. If you make it so that there is um, more than one lane of, or more than one vehicles with the traffic, then it reverts from the entire road to that four foot rule, um, which is also in the statute where you have to allow four feet from uh, a bicyclist when you pass. I just I, I don't know if it has any effect on what you're describing, but widening the road might actually have the perverse impact of removing the legal ability of cyclists to use the whole road. We're reducing the width of the road. Well, but you're talking about adding uh, a shoulder. No, yeah. In order to do that, we would reduce the width of each cart path. Would it be reduced by the That's same the width as the the shoulder being proposed? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm trying to follow along. I've been trying to read this, so, this statutory language as well. Yeah, so they just replaced the road right in front of me. Chesterville Road was just replaced. Um, and I've seen it replaced four times now. Every time that it gets replaced, it gets a little bit wider. Um, there was uh, 15 years ago, there was kind of a program where they would put just strips down the side um, because the sides kept eroding away. So we used to have much narrower roads. Um, somewhere in there is, it was a happy medium. And now we're going to the point where we're beyond what is necessary. And people are just driving so much faster because our roads aren't as narrow and windy as they used to be. Um, I think we need to take a hard look at what that width is and see what we have for um, you know, the width of the road uh, without moving anything uh, before we discount that as being not an option. Um, this might be, I guess Gypsy Hill comes to mind, but uh, what I'm trying <laughs> to think about is high speed roads that, township roads that, um, of high speed or high traffic, right? So Gypsy Hill comes to mind in terms of it. their folks are concerned about the speed on Gypsy Hill. Um, what, what are there other roads where people say, hey, that's that's a high traffic, high speed road that the, that the township has? Maybe Jeff might have a better idea than, than me, but. Hesmill Road, Old Hesmill. School House Road. Okay, yeah, Old School House is a good, good point. Before, I mean, I, before the speed bumps, Old Schoolhouse was a racetrack. Okay. It still go, is, John. It's it a short is, yeah, because I know I go 35 or less. With those you race there. between the speed bumps. Is now yep. the, that's now the game. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And there's, <laughs> there's definitely no room on Gypsy Hill for a shoulder or a sidewalk or no, anything. Right. So, yeah. Would we be better off focusing on crosswalks? I think Gypsy Hill is, is a candidate for instead of the the humps the uh the one lane section um i think that's what it's a it's a shortcut so you're you're fighting people that are are trying they're already behind schedule or they just have a faster time frame in their head and they're trying to you know they're trying to make up time on the corner so they're they're either coming south or north and they're trying to avoid chesterville is is the reality make them make them wait at a, a one-way section it doesn't hurt the people that live there. They would love it. It just hurts the uh, the short cutters. I'd be happy. <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy with it. My commute time, if we do that, you're gonna change your commute time. <laughs> I, does that mean that you uh, you may you may race between the humps? <laughs> uh, you know, have, yeah, I wouldn't well, say anything. We're being recorded. We're going to go that way for school pickup. So, <laughs> I mean, there had been some conversation last year about uh, humps and uh, or speed bumps, and uh, I don't know if that has proceeded beyond the conversation phase. But yeah, that that would be wonderful. <laughs> for Gypsy Hill, if we put a hump right at the crest of the hill. That would be. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, and to be, be awesome. to be perfectly honest, that's, that's in front of my driveway. So it's a I jump. I mean, no, I mean, it's good and bad, right? It, 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 it is an exercise in, uh, in, in daring getting out of my driveway sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if what Jeff was saying about 
um, well, the schoolhouse, it wouldn't solve the problem. I, th I think we get back to the original where we identify problems, we identify the hot spots. Um, <clears throat> we, um, I, I would still like to look at the township globally in terms of shoulders, sidewalks, paths, trails. <clears throat> when we talk specifically about Hess Mill, Old Schoolhouse, and um, Gypsy Hill, I think that's where we utilize our traffic consultants and talk about what remedies you may have for traffic calming. Um, but that that's, I think, when we're, when we're actually down trying to come up with the final solution or at least the solution that seems most reasonable. Um, so we slid into roads instead of pedestrian access. <laughs> We're solving all the problems. By, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> How much pedestrian, I mean, there again, if we include safely getting to your mail, all those roads are hotspots for pedestrian access. Yeah. <laughs> But keep in mind, the post office dictates where you put your mailbox, not the township. Uh, yeah, and I think I now, but I don't know if that means, you know, the way our roads are set up, you know, you're, you, we're really, people are like hanging off or walking into the road to get their mail. I mean, it, it, so does that mean that the, the town, the, the, I don't know what you call it, the ordinance? says that it has to be hanging off the road or it's just our roads have gotten become such that that's the only place you can put them right so that, that's kind of where i'm where what i'm thinking is these these folks who are walking into the middle of the road are they doing that because they have to because the road system is the way it is or are they doing that because that's where the post office says they must be no they're they're doing that because they're their mailbox was there. There was a shoulder and the road got widened. And then the shoulder's no longer there. Exactly. So they didn't used to stand in the road, but now they do. Okay. So that's not necessary. So I don't, I'm not disagreeing with you, Jeff. You're right. Um, it's so what we're, what I'm hearing is it's probably not that it's not that way now because the post office made it. So it's because the road was re-engineered to put them in the middle of the road. So I don't think that's always true. Um, okay. But I think that what Chuck's suggesting with respect to a shoulder, since these are rural roads and the post office requires the box to be on one side of the road, means that what you look at is putting the shoulder on the same side as the box and making sure that the post office agrees that the box has to be off the shoulder for safety purposes. So that mm -hmm. when somebody goes across the road to get the mail, they're not standing in a traffic lane. If, if you do a search for mailboxes, rural mailboxes, what it says is position your mailbox 41 to 45 inches from the road surface to the bottom of the mailbox or point of mail entry. Place your mailbox six inches to eight inches back from the curb. If you do not have a raised curb, contact your local postmaster for guidance. So I think what's happened is, as the roads have widened, they've widened into the space of the mailbox. If you don't have a curb, but you have access for the mailman to get to the mailbox, you can move it back from the road surface because that's exactly what I have. That's exactly what I was told to do by the mailman, by the postmaster when I asked him that question. So I don't think there's any rules about it having to be in the roadway. What I've just read to you is from the U.S. Postal Service, um, rural, rural mailbox regulations. So the, real, the regulations are really have to do with the height and the ability of the mail truck to get adjacent to the mailbox. If there's a curb there, 
you've got to keep it within a certain distance of the curb so the mailman can open the door and put the mail in. If there's no curb there, but you have a shoulder, you can put the mailbox to the edge of the shoulder. But the guy just has to be able to get in to the mailbox. So I think we're, I think we're worrying about things that don't exist. I think these are the regulations that this is what was given to me when I had the mailbox too low because the road went up. So I don't, I think the, the solution is there, it's solvable. Now, on which side it is, that's an issue with the routing. I, I don't disagree with that. That's, that's up to the postal carrier, but if the township has a safety issue, they may relent on that. Dave, I know that it's a slow process, but eventually we'll replace all our roads. Um, Jeff, can you tell me how long a road lasts, one of our feeder roads in the township? I would say approximately 10 to 15 years, 15 years on the high side before we have to do something major. So we, so we would have, in 10 years, we would have um, the new style road on all of our roads. That's pretty good. And everything that comes up, everything that comes up that's, that we're, any new developments, um, any new parks or anything like that, we, we can say, listen, people walk along this. It's not a pedestrian access, but people walk along this. And we want this area to enhance. We don't want them in the shoulder. We want them, we want it enhanced. And that's when we get the trail put in. And instead of it being a trail to nowhere, it used to be sidewalk to nowhere, but instead of it being trail to nowhere, now all of a sudden we can say, no, within 10 years, people can walk someplace. Every 10 to 15 years, depending on our budget, we may do a three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half. So space it out that way. How many miles of roads do we have? 15? 38. So that's telling me it takes 38 years to do all the township roads. Again, about every 10 to 15 years, depending on the budget, we'll do three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half. That would be like what I would call a major overlay and paving. Okay. So how long does the road last? About 10 to 15 years. We're trying to do things better right now, and I think we're going to be able to extend that with the engineer that we have, Ron Ragan. So uh, I'm giving you a broad number, 10 to 15. If you want to use 15, that's fine. But I'm hoping we're going to get into a program of milling paving and then maintaining these roads by doing what they call a fog seal to help <clears throat> prolong them even further. I'd like to do a, a test road or a test portion with that and see how we do and see if we can make that grow and stretch our dollars. The other aspect that we haven't talked about as far as safe, uh, we, we talked about crosswalks or whatever, but you know some of the pedestrian access is along state roads. And so we want to also be addressing some of those issues with PennDOT in the next several years in terms of crosswalks across um, state roads and safer pedestrian travel along state roads, which would be separate from us only looking at our um, yeah. township road improvements. And I think we can probably get a good chunk of that accomplished in the next couple of years. The 896 improvement project is well underway and the roundabout project um, is underway. And so I think, you know, I think John brought up uh, at the last meeting that, you know, PennDOT is always reluctant to do anything extra because they've got to get buy land 
from the property owners along the road. In this case, they're already doing that. So this might be the time where maybe we um, focus some energy on PennDOT to get them to start talking about that pedestrian access and, and what their plans are for, for making 896 safer. I th- and I think, Jeff, if I rem- maybe I'm misremembering this, but I seem to remember that this is part of the safe part of the 896 improvement process is to make that roadway safer, right? That's part of their charter. Uh, that, so this might this that, might be the way to do that. That that is what I would call a goal, Dave. Yeah, that's that's what's on, listed on their on their on PennDOT's website is that that is a safety improvement. Yes. So I think, you know, now we can probably get a good chunk done just through working with PennDOT and taking advantage of what they're already doing, which is buying the property and easements to get that roadway uh, widened. Um, You know, one of the things that I, I think about is occasionally they put those grooves, those parallel grooves on the side of the road to, I guess, their wake up strips or whatever. They end up wreaking havoc on bikes and they end up wreaking havoc on um, on Amish wagons. But I don't know. If, I don't know if that's part of their plan, but if that is, we might want to talk to them about that, too. Um, also, noise pollution. Noise pollution is another big aspect of it. So yeah. I, I don't want to belabor this too much, but I think that's a, it's a good comment to make, Dave, that we need to get PennDOT involved and we might have an opportune moment to do that now. I I think we'll get their attention more if we can have some stand, some details, some standards nailed down for our local roads that we can talk to them about um, what we're looking for, as opposed to what can you give us? Uh, It's true. It's true. I'm not sure if they maybe, and I guess I don't, I haven't looked too deeply, but I don't know if PennDOT, I don't know if they have standards. Oh, they do. (laughs) <laughs> you know that I guess they're not appropriate or what we want necessarily. Exactly. Well, they have a standard that that runs from here all the way to Erie. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, it, it's it, and they're much more concerned with urban and and uh, high, dense areas than they are with with us because that's where the squawking mostly comes from. Yeah. I will. I can say, from my recollections of the discussions, that an important facet of the 896 safety improvement project is um, a widening of the shoulders. Uh, in not in all areas, it won't happen um, in the village because it's a historic district. But in many areas, it specifically calls for wider shoulders. I don't know that that's going to make that the road of choice for walking or running, but it, I mean, it helps. Um, It helps if you have to go on it for a short stretch. I would not want to be on it for a long stretch as a pedestrian, unless I absolutely had to. I used to run on 841 and it's got a one and a half foot wide shoulder. Um, Good thing it also has some grassy knolls on the side because sometimes you just run off the side. But um, it is what you it is what it is. Anything we can do to make it better? Yeah, I mean one of the one of the hotspot roads that I think is would if I could do anything with beyond eight ninety six is Appleton Road at the moment. Um, Traffic on Appleton seems to be getting heavier and a lot faster, a lot more trucks going down Appleton. And there's a lot of pedestrians who actually use that road because there it's it, that's how you get to Fair Hill and some of the other uh, areas down there. And so, you know, that's one area where, like you said, you kind of have to jump off the road because there really is no shoulder at all. Um, so I don't know so, if there's... Well, no. we could simply, you know, after we've done our homework to, to check um, cartway widths, we could simply restripe that. 
No, you can. It's a state road. Yeah, Appleton's a state road. That's Appleton that's state road. state yeah. maintained. Yeah. yeah. Why yeah, is the, why is uh, that state maintained? There's no bridge on there, is there? It's been like that since I moved in in 1976. Because right, it's a real old road. It's not a it's not a state route, right? It's just it's state a, maintained. Well, it is state maintained. Remember, it goes into Maryland and, and then 896 goes up to Lancaster. But do they, I mean, so Chesterville is state maintained. But yep. It's not a state road. There's, there's a distinction, right? It's different than 841. When I say a state road, it's, it's a road that's owned and maintained by PennDOT. So the example would be Appleton Road, Chesterville Road, Strickersville Road, Pennox Bridge Road. So we, those roads, we right? as a township chose to, to let Chesterville be maintained by the state because if you follow Chesterville down to Landenburg, you go through uh, London, Britain, and then back into uh, New Garden. Yep. New, New Garden and Franklin are maintained by the state. But the center section, um, London, Britain, I think I have the right township. London, yep. Britain maintains their section. They bought it. They basically, I didn't even buy it, but they was it was... <clears throat> Sold to them by PennDOT. Like, so, so PennDOT basically, so if, if Franklin Township wanted to, we could get our section of Chesterville, but, and then they would give us enough money to like resurface the road for 10 years. The problem is for Franklin is one, after that 10 years, you're, you've got to maintain another stretch of road. The other problem with Chesterville Road and Franklin Township is we've got a bridge in on Chesterville right. Road. Right. So I, we I'm, don't want that. But what <laughs> about don't. Apple? But 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 this I suspect the same thing applies to Appleton. Oh, I'm sure. It sure it does, but what uh, and there's so no bridge. What, what you're so here's the trade-off is you now have the added expense of of one more stretch of road that the township has to take care of. Don't and you so, get extra don't you get extra liquid power. fuels for that? You That's do. for I'm sorry, Dave. Oh, go ahead. We get liquid fuels for township roads, not state roads. If you convert it from a state to a township, you get more liquid fuels money, correct? I would as I'm gonna say yes. this. I would assume so, yes. Yes, yeah. You you would yeah. get more liquid fuels, but the liquid fuels doesn't really cover cover, cover doesn't, the cost. Okay. I just thought you got more money. Yeah, yeah. You do you definitely get more money, but you don't, it doesn't really cost cover the cost of maintenance. So if you know the so the argument for Chesterville would be the road's falling apart and PennDOT's really not taking care of it. Right. And so maybe the residents would say we would take on the liability of the bridge. We would take on the added cost of the road because PennDOT's not doing their part in keeping it up. With with Appleton, and, and I'm just kind of speak, speaking off the top of my head here. So, you know, um, it's with Appleton, the road isn't really in bad shape. It's just a narrow road that's getting a lot of speed to it. So we would say. I think it would be harder. It would be a, a harder sell to say we're going to take on the ad expense of Appleton Road, even though it's a good shape and PennDOT takes pretty good care of it, because we want to put you know wider shoulders in or whatever it is. I'm not saying it's not beyond the pale, but it's it's still an added expense, and I think we would have to come up with some sort of compelling reason where the township would say yes, this is something that we must do, right? Um, not you know. Not saying that we can't get to that point, but well, I think, we I think at least for Chesterville, we should try to buy the uh, the section between Chuck's house and up to the corner <laughs> of eight forty one. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Do it after they put in the roundabout. 
I wasn't advocating that we should buy Chesterville. I was just using it as an example. That's all. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. understand. It's no. just we're just um, brainstorming here, you know. So we got our brand new um, mirror. Um, That's right. It was foggy this morning. The uh, the mirror was fogged over. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. So we got a uh, Jeff, can you in the morning go out there with a rag? Wipe it off for, for Chuck. I'll make the effort. <laughs> so any, we're, um, what are we, 15 or what are we, but um, any new issues or topics that we think we want to get into the minutes? And then do we want to talk about a committee getting together before the next planning commission? I'm for that. Do we um should we try to figure out a date and time by emails or now or why don't we do it with emails? Okay. Let's have a rough understanding who's gonna be on the committee now. Right. That was my next anybody wanting to be included in those emails. I do. Put me in. I heard Mark. Did anyone else? I'd be interested. I, I don't know that I'm actually getting all the emails that go around. I didn't see anything from you, Chuck. So, but if there is something, I'll take it. I'd be interested. Dave, oh, I hit the list. You can add me if you want, Dave. I had I hit reply all. Um, did you get it originally from Jeff? Uh, possibly yeah if, if you if jeff you could initiate the first email that way which you would anyways yeah so yes yeah, so it'd be i think it would be the what we were talking about dave was having at least two supervisors on the on this committee one just because if you know i i think i suggested donna um, because she has six years left on her term, and I think I have three. So um, depending what happens in three years, I'd, it would be nice to have that, some continuity on that task force. If she's up for it, she might not want to do it, but I, that's why I suggested Donna. Um, Jim's in the same situation. Jim's, Jim uh, Johnson is also um at um, six years, so it might be nice to have that if he's uh, if it, if Donna doesn't want to do it, maybe Jim. So I'll leave it up to to Jeff. You know, he reached out to Donna and and um, see if she's interested, um, and then we maybe we can figure out from there if there's anyone else we need. Sounds good. All right. Good. Um. I believe that was all the topics that we had for tonight. Any public discussion, any public comment? I actually have just an organizational question. Um, sure. And it, Jeff might be able to speak to this. I, um, my term as an alternate actually, I think, expired at the beginning of the year. Um, I, got, I received an email from Sarah saying if I wanted to continue doing it, but I've never actually – gotten anything back and i don't uh, know if i have to go to the board of supervisors so or, or what. So, so last night uh was it last night two nights ago we we reappointed you oh okay, yeah okay. i think I, I, the, the emails haven't gone out yet to to let everybody know who got what but uh yeah you were reappointed at the org meeting on tuesday okay that's on sarah's list of things to complete to send those out okay Okay, Jack, that's how they know whether or not you're paying attention to their meetings or not. That's right. Terribly <laughs> disappointed, Zach, that you didn't uh, join our org meeting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the most exciting meeting of the year. <laughs> you got it over very quickly. That's true. We were done pretty quick. Yeah. We already have a, a zoning officer in place. Yes. We do. We'll find out who that is at the HARB meeting. It is uh, Mark Gordon, 
and he works through Pannoni and Associates. I don't think he'll be at this upcoming hard meeting. Oh, that's why it got pushed back. Right. Yeah, the one in a couple of days, right. Um, is he out of Westchester, Jeff? The main office is out of Westchester, but he, he serves a similar function with New Garden Township. Okay. Mr. Lagasse, do you have, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. Do you have time to come in Tuesday sometime between 12 and 3? I should. Hang on. Let me just look at my. Okay. Well, you don't just, just let me know in an email yeah. tonight. Um, tomorrow. Jeff, in terms of the minutes um, with these um, punctuation issues, um, you want me to just drop something by for you? I can produce a clean copy and. I, I have full faith in you, Mr. Lagasse. I'm fine with you doing it. Okay, so I'm just going to mark it up in red because I don't I don't have an I don't think I have an editable copy. If you want That's me to go ahead and edit it, you can just send me the doc file. Well, tomorrow morning I'll send you the Word file. Okay. So you can adjust that to how you like. I'm, Jeff, I'm can I expand that out? Standards, not necessarily to my preferences. No, but understand. I'll be very no, agree I'll be very agreeable. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's just it's a lot of periods mostly. Mm -hmm. Jeff, can I expand my question out to include um, Pete used to sit with us a lot. Who would that now be? That would be for traffic. That would be Nathan Klein of Pannoni. Traffic and stormwater. Traffic, stormwater, general engineering. Okay. For MS4, we're gonna ha we have Aero Consulting. What's MS4? Storm that's water. the storm. That's the global stormwater mm -hmm. that everyone calls an unfunded mandate that everyone has to deal with. Okay, but it's it's not what we see. Um, it's not the engineer that we typically have go through development. Correct. Uh, okay. That would be Nathan. Correct. Okay. Jeff, if you want to set a time on Tuesday, I can do it now. 12.30. Okay, good. All right. Any, how about if we uh, adjourn? We'll look forward to Jeff's email for our uh, task force. We'll adjourn at 8.19. <clears throat> All right. Happy All right. New Year, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.